Today I'm here with three friends to give you a exercise for jumping position. So this is one exercise that's going to really improve your stability, your security in jumping position. And I think the way that we're going to show this is gonna give you a better understanding of the mechanics of jumping position as well. I'm Callie, you're watching the weekly show here at Horse Class. And today I'm here with Wendy Murdoch, with Joker, and with our rider, Elmer. Great, so, you know, with jumping position, one of the things that's so important is that people understand where their hip joints are. And so often what I see is that people fold at the waist instead of at the hips. And this is gonna really interfere with their entire jumping position stability um, over a fence, on the flat, over poles. So this is critical that they understand that they need to fold at the hips. So we have Elmer here today so he can help us understand what we're talking about. And so if you just hold him upright, that way I can point at things. And I'm just gonna kind of drop his arm out of the way. In fact, we'll just give you a hand to hold as well, sure. okay? So that we can really clearly see where the hip joint is. And I'm just gonna come around to the front. And so this is the top of your pelvis, the iliac crest. And many people think of this as the hip because culturally we call this the hips, but it's really the top of the pelvis and this is not where we fold for jumping. What we need to fold is at the hip joint. And so it's a big ball and socket joint. The socket is part of the pelvis. The ball is part of the femur. It's the largest joint in your body and it's the closest joint to the horse. And this is where we need to fold for jumping. So if we try to fold at the waist, which he has some difficulty doing, he's gonna collapse down with his upper body and fold here in the spine. And that's actually gonna cause an opening in the hip joint, which is gonna put your seat in the wrong position and make you very vulnerable. If he hollows at the waist and this goes forward, now you can see that the seat bones are gonna point back and he's on the forehand. You can already see how his whole upper body has come forward and he's gonna be very vulnerable again. The answer to most people when they fold here at the waist or hinge at the waist is that they then have to push their foot forward and try to brace against their stirrup to stabilize themselves. But of course their body weight's already forward so the movement of the horse causes them to pitch forward over the jump and then they're yelled at to sit up and so they hinge even more trying to throw the upper body back, the pelvis comes forward, the leg jams, and now they're really unstable. So we really need to understand poor Elmer. He's not designed to do these movements. Um, we'll just see if we can sort him out here a bit. So we really need to fold at the hip joint, not at the top of the pelvis. And so to do that, we're just gonna take Elmer and we're just gonna let him come down and keep going, keep going, keep going, awesome. And here you can see the whole torso acted as one unit, as one piece, and all of the movement occurred at that hip joint. Now, of course, here he is laying on the horse's neck, but you can do this as an exercise unmounted, which we'll show you, so that you understand that what you're looking for is this fold at the hip, okay? So when he comes upright, again, he opened at the hip. So this is closing the hip angle, the distance between the pelvis and the femur. It's closing and opening. Now for the landing phase or a drop fence, what you wanna do is lean back from the hip. And again, this is where all the movement needs to occur, not in the lower back, not changing the angle of the pelvis. So you can see when we fold all the way down that the seat bones are pointing straight back. They're in line with the entire torso. They haven't changed angle relative to the torso. If he were to hollow, now the seat bones are no longer in line. And if he were to round, which is the hardest thing for Elmer, he really can't do it because he's fixed. But if he was to round, the seat bones would be pointing forward with his back rounded. And so neither of those is gonna be effective. We really need, whoop, got his arm caught. <laughs> to understand this idea at folding at the hip, and then that's gonna allow the hip, knee, and ankle 
to absorb the movement of the horse. So now we've pulled Joker out. I have taken Elmer's place and uh, Wendy is going to show, she's gonna walk me through an exercise that you can do on your own that you can even do following along to help find this movement in the hip. Great, so first of all, let's identify where your hip is, okay? So take your left hand, it's okay, bring your feet back where you, like square, mm -hmm. great. Take your left hand, just slide it up your thigh, okay? And come into the crease of your pants. And now just, that's right, just go right in there and just move your knee a little bit left and right and feel where that joint is, just like we found on Elmer, okay? Now some people think the joint is the top of the pelvis, so put your hand there, okay? And move your knee again. And notice there is no movement there. So really what we're talking about is where the leg comes into the body, okay? So that's where your hip joint is, right? So now with your hands, just take both of them and come into your hip joints and then very slowly fold forward over your hands. Lovely, and come back. And just do that a few times, okay? And go slow enough that you can think about your whole body going forward as one piece, just the way we did with Elmer, right? And notice that if you pause there, you're in balance, you're in control, right? And if I push on you, which you can have someone test you, but just have them be gentle, okay? I'm just coming up on her sternum and I'm just pushing a little bit. And Callie's really solid. And if I push from her back, she's also really solid. That's what we're looking for in that jumping position, okay? So now this time, fold at the waist, which is where a lot of people fold. So above the app, and if I push now, <laughs> right? You're just not solid. No. And you can see already Callie flushed a little. She started to get cherry in the cheeks because our nervous system recognizes when we're not stable. It's, it's not an option, right? It's a reaction because our nervous system's so fine tuned, mm -hmm. okay? Now the other way to go is to take the top of the pelvis too far back. Again, we're folding at the waist, right? And you can feel that this, uh, you can already, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> if I push, I'm gonna be really careful to make sure I don't knock her off balance, yeah. okay? Yeah, and then the more seen in the hunter world, the kind of folding, yep, and now sit up, keeping your back hollow, very nice. And you can see that she's overly closed that hip. Look at the tension in the jaw, and again, if she's not stable <laughs> and she's gonna have to brace, and of course, if she does this on landing, she's gonna pull on her horse, mm -hmm. right? So if I go here and you go back, you're gonna save yourself. It's intelligent to save yourself. The problem is we're punishing our horse because we weren't in a solid position. So really the key is folding from the hip, so just identify where your hip is again. And you can always take one hand and put it on your lower back to feel that your lower back is flat. So you have that combination, very nice, flat back, fold at the hip. And what I want you to see is that Callie is totally in control of this movement. She's never at a place where she's falling or has to brace, right? So you can choose just how much you want to fold because you're folding where it belongs, at the hip. Yes. Such a simple exercise, but what a difference it makes and to many other areas in riding too, not just the jumping position. Absolutely. The hips are so critical to everything we do in riding. So it's really important for you to have a clear understanding of where your hip joint is, what closing, this is closing the hip angle, this is opening the hip angle, what that means and how to do it. Thank you, Wendy, for sharing that. And if you're interested in learning more from Wendy and going through many more exercises such as this one, unmounted as well as in the saddle and then over jumps as well, join us in the Effortless Rider Jumping Course. There's more information and a link down below. We would also love to hear from you. Scroll down and leave a comment about one problem that you have jumping. What is something that you feel when you jump that you would love to have an exercise to help you solve? I look forward to reading your comments. If you're watching this anywhere besides horseclass.com, go there for the best conversations and many more videos and resources like this one.